By a press note issued on April 18th, Government of India has amended its foreign direct investment policy, the FDI policy, thereby making prior governmental approval mandatory for foreign investments from countries that share a land border with India. Basically, I think to control aggressive, unscrupulous takeovers of local companies by foreign entities who are waiting to make predatory moves on account of fluid economic uh, situation triggered by a coronavirus pandemic worldwide. The directive not only makes it mandatory for an entity of a country which shares a land border with India to get approval, but also for those entities where the beneficial owner of investment into India is situated or is a citizen of any such country. So basically, one cannot use another destination as a debtor to enter India because that would tantamount to circumvention. So what you can't do directly, you cannot do indirectly. The Indian entity receiving the investment will have to report and seek approval for such investments executed overseas or indirect investment where, where the beneficial ownership is in the seven countries covered under the notification, though none of the countries are named, but it's obvious who are these countries, China, Nepal, Pakistan, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Myanmar and Afghanistan. The Indian government has made a significant change in the FDI policy by regulating the indirect acquisition of investments by entities based in China. With effect from April 18th, any change in ownership of the investment will also have to be cleared by the government. As the amended directive says, in the event of the transfer of ownership of any existing or future FDI in an entity in India, directly or indirectly, resulting in the beneficial ownership falling within the restriction or purview, as indicated in the press note, such subsequent change in beneficial ownership will also require government approval. China's reaction, obviously, you know, has been very strong as they have alleged that the additional bar barriers set by the Indian side uh, for, for, for investors from, from specific countries violate WTO's principles of non-discrimination and go against general trend of liberalization and facilitation of trade and investment. They have blamed India of not conforming to the consensus of G20 leaders and trade ministers to, to, to realize a free, fair, non-discriminatory, transparent, predictable uh, and, and stable trade and investment environment and to sort of keep the markets open. Ironically, until the last year end, China's aggregate investment in India had exceeded, had exceeded beg your pardon, 8 billion US dollars, obviously far more than the to total investment of India's other bordering nations. But what has prompted this restrictive policy? Well, this decision came at the back of People's Bank of China raising its stake from 0.8% to 1.01% in India's largest non-banking mortgage provider, HDFC. Mortgage provider, HDFC. Further apprehensions and fears have been on the rise across the globe regarding Chinese investors using the pandemic opportunity to ac acquire distressed, distraught, and, and bankrupt assets all over the world at low valuations. This could be a national security issue or an exploitation issue for nations, including India, and also to defend their economic interests. In fact, the European Commission has ha uh, had called upon, I beg your pardon, its member states to safeguard its strategic assets from a probable Chinese takeover. Australia is also taking similar preventive actions. And regarding allegation of WTO breach, WTO uh, uh, rules breach, I don't think there is any such violation because 
WTO rules give ample autonomy to, to, the, to the member states to safeguard its domestic interest by addressing internal matters. Article 20 of GATT rules under WTO on general exceptions lays out a number of specific instances in which WTO members may be exempted from GATT rules. The WTO panel and appellate body have given quite a wide connotation interpretation to such exceptions in the past. India's new FDI di uh, directive is, is, is absolutely legitimate, I think, and, and will squarely fall under the given exceptions of GATT rules. Well, that's all for today. Please do not forget to subscribe to this YouTube, YouTube channel and also press the bell button for notifications. Goodbye and stay safe.